ball breaker and also sparked. The song is in the key of E. We start the song with this very gentle. We can roll back your volume knob, or you can just pick very gently. I think rolling back just a bit helps to tame a bit of the high end. Basically, we're just playing double stops here. B on the G string and D on the B string. Okay. And then this sort of A chord here. And you can play this with a beret tube, I'm not sure which one I prefer. It's up to you to decide. And then you play the A again and the open strings, the B and G strings open. So this is a G chord. Repeat this last part. And finish off with a E chord. So I think the first one is just a power chord here. We we're playing this chicken picking, so use your pick and your fingers to pick pluck the strings. Notice that he seems to like to play this on transitions uh, because this has a little more tension and build up. Okay, so this is the intro. For the main riff, we have this. So this is just the E power chord and the G. And we're sitting around between these two chords, so... Right? I think this riff sounds the best if you take care not to overplay with your strumming hand. So it's very easy to go like, you know. Especially with Angus' part, because this is very nice to, it's a nice feeling to play this, so you, you can get very, uh, you can get excited very easily. But the emphasis should always be on the G chord. And you don't need necessarily to hit that hard on the first two E chords, you know, this. We can actually play this E chord very lightly, like this. Just a very light stroke. And then we hit the G chord with more energy, like this. Didn't notice the difference, so again, this is playing everything with full force. And this is playing with dynamics. I think it flows a lot better like this, because we have the rock and roll thing, you know, it makes you want to dance. It creates that groove, you know, it, it bounces, sort of. And the timing is also very important. And this riff is played, it starts on the end of four, so one, two, three, four, ba -da -da -da. So one and two and three and four and So one and two and three and four and one and The G chord falls exactly on the downbeat of one And that's why we have to play it with more emphasis And it's the same pattern as the chorus The only difference is that you 
keep the card ringing for the chorus, like. <coughs> But you know, the same principle applies. Okay. Instead of... Right. So the pre-chorus goes like this. Basically, it's just G, D, and A. I'll play that slowly for you. Okay, so uh, watch for the strumming. So down, down, up, down. Okay? You can watch this video to see he plays it like this, actually. And then the D. D again. A. And E. So. And here on the pre-chorus, we also have many chords on upbeats, and that's why it sounds so groovy. The first G is on the upbeat of one, so one, two, three, four, one, pa -da 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 -da. so the first G and the last D of this section, they're on the upbeat, while the two middle strokes on the G, they're on the downbeats. So this dance between upbeats and downbeats, it's what creates the groove. The first D is on the downbeat. But this A is on the upbeat. So... And the E on the downbeat again, so... The next part goes like this. Well, basically just G and D here. Let the chords ring for the last one, and then... This is what Angus plays on the rhythm part, you know, the rhythm track, where when they track it on the studio. So this is the rhythm guitar on the right side, which is Angus's. While Malcolm plays something thicker, more like... Playing full chords, Angus is playing something a little more subtle, so... So basically just... And the C note here with just a slight bend, I mean just slightly. Okay, now the intro bit but in A as well, so... So G... That slightly bent C note here again, and then so uh, then you finish off the solo with that. It's 
it's the same pattern as the pre-chorus, so... <laughs> After that, he plays the intro again in E, and you can play it with full energy here. And with that, you can basically play the whole song. There is a variation of the pre-chorus where they let the chords ring a bit more, so... And it's basically just the same thing as before, except the chords are ringing. Then at the end we have So you're just looping the first part of the intro And So yeah, these are the rhythm parts to Ball Breaker and I hope you enjoy the video and I promise I'll make the solo uh, also, I just have to learn it first. Um, but yeah, see you next time.